for so many summing up a day that not many saw coming. How impressed are you with that win? Is it the best win on your watch so far? Oh, I haven't got that far into it. I was really proud of the players. I thought they just were fantastic. So many key moments in that game. You know, we just talked about it with them that the they're in, I think as a player in, in front of, you know, it's a big game, a lot of people watching it against top of the table team. We just had so many key moments that players stood up in and I think I was so proud of the leadership of the players and everything that they did in so many of those moments. And I mean, the most obvious one is the captain in James Sicily and he just controlled the back half of the ground completely. And he was just, I mean, his whole year has been like that, just more people I've seen it today, um, but he's been just phenomenal for us. I think Will Day through the middle of the ground um, and Dylan Moore in the front half, you've got these three guys who, it's not just them every week, but the the way that they are able to lead their lines and make sure that everyone is on the same page consistently throughout the game. Um, yeah, I was really proud of the players. What did you think of Finn Yeah, we. I mean, uh, Finn... It, Finn will need, leave no stone unturned in getting his job done. And unfortunately, quite often this year, we haven't been able to let him do his best job because of other problems in the game. You know, we can't retain the ball in our front half. We can't put enough pressure on the opposition. We can't slow them down. We can't win centre bounces. You know, there's always something else that's causing us trouble. Uh, and so today, Finn got to do the job for the whole game and we saw what he can do. And, you know, Dacos is an absolute star. He's had the fantastic season and um, you know he's he still helped them in different ways without doing it himself. But Finn, I was really proud of him and he was quite disappointed that he got a couple of free kicks um, after the game. But he was he was so diligent. We thought about dropping it at three quarter time. He said, no, I can still go to him. I can still go to him if we do this. And he's so diligent in what he wanted to do. So I was really... I mean, I, I knew Finn had that in his kit bag, but we haven't allowed it. So it's good that he got to do it today. Just, sorry, just every week, coaches get asked, how do you stop Dacos? You know, it's been a weekly question at press conferences before games. Was that a blueprint? Was that... Uh, it, like, I'd love to say it was easy. It's an absolute nightmare. In the coaches' box, it's a nightmare. If you, we, have a, we have a meeting before the game, you know, what-ifs meeting. And, you know, I would say 30 or 40% of it is, OK, what if Dacos starts here, does this, does that? And so it takes a lot of the preparation of a game and so it's not an easy thing to do when you compromise other part to tag anyone you have to compromise a part of your game and we decided not to compromise centre bounce by putting him in there and that that worked well um, but he obviously got hurt as well so he didn't get his chance to, to genuinely beat the tag across the full four quarters he obviously carried a, a corky or, or something and um, wasn't moving too well by after half time so um, it certainly worked for us but there it's not to say it would work again next time. Can you just take us into the mindset though? Because you did that big job on Josh Kelly, but there was 48 hours of build up this time because you put it on the agenda on Thursday that he'd go to me and there was so much talk around it. What, just take us inside his mindset. How does he prepare and how does he do that? Because no one's been able to stop Nick Dacos across his first 50 games. I mean, he, I, th I think he's been limited in different games by different players. So Finn mentioned to me that he'd seen what a couple of other players had done on him. I mean, it, Dacos is, is he 19? Um, years old and he's already getting spoken about like this but um, we might make Finn available for you later in the week if you like and he can uh, answer those I thought I thought consistently across across the field and even like I think about Blake Hardwick's game he had a couple of just no one around him one on one contest on Elliot who's as good a small f medium marking forward as there is in the competition and he's able to take marks on him and I know Elliot kicks three but I just thought the the way that someone like him plays we don't, he doesn't get the accolades and, and the, the scrutiny that others do, but I just thought we had so many players across the board today that were able to get their own job done, and that's what you have to do against quality sides like the Pies. In the third quarter, there was a moment that was probably Gateway the double goal, Dacos free kick, but you still managed to kick your way clear when it sounded like the Pies were turning back. Is that sort of a sign that the group's maturing a bit to be able to handle a situation like that? Yeah, I thought Harry Morrison, I mean, he hasn't been in the side for a while and he, we, we brought him in knowing that he would add a bit of leadership and give us a bit more balance of the oval on the wing and um, we probably missed a bit of that last week and bringing Harry in, there was a key moment where he kicked his goal uh, to the right-hand end and 
they'd kicked. You know, I think when you play Collingwood, you're so prepared for their to, them to come. They're going to come. They're going to come. And when they did, we got that centre bounce and then that goal. And so Harry's 24, I think, and you know he's played sort of 80 games. And when you have a little bit more maturity, and that's that's the blueprint that we're looking for. You know, we looked at the side today, and so many players stood up, and Harry was one who's been on the peripheral for a while now, and he comes in, plays, has that moment. He also had a fantastic tackle on the boundary line. And so when the players are able to execute in that moment, then that gives you every chance to, to win. Oh, I mean, there's a part of me that says we've beaten Brisbane and St Kilda and uh, and now and now the Pies, and there's a part of me that says, well, we're 16th, so let's be realistic. On our day, we can we can match it with good sides, but realistically, we have been nowhere near consistently good enough to compete with the sides. I mean, Collingwood produce high level play week after week after week after week, and we're not currently able to do that. And that's our great challenge is can we be consistently at our best or closer to our best than we've been capable of so far. And today was a step in the right direction, but I looked at last week, we conceded nine goals in the first quarter. So we're still not there as far as building consistency of the squad. Now, you know, even the last quarter of last week, so that's four quarters in a row of pretty consistent footy, but the best sides play 20 quarters in a row before they have a lapse one. So that's what we're working towards. Can you use four games to suspension still be All Australian? Yes, that's a hard yes. I think uh, Stuart made All Australian last year. He missed more than that, so yes, he could um, slash should Just on your be All Australian. In your wins, he's been crucial. The leadership this year, obviously, the leadership group. No one was in the leadership group previously. Like, what has he given you this year that we don't know? We don't see from the outside. He, I mean, I think he's his own man, sis. He doesn't do it by anyone else's rule book. He doesn't lead in a way. He had a, he had a fantastic conversation. Might be a little bit out of school, but I'll, it's a while ago now. But probably eight, eight or ten weeks ago, he just wasn't... He had, he had a quieter game. And he said, I think I was leading too much. So this week, I'm just going to just play myself. I'm just going to be my best. And then he had... He had a game against St Kilda where he had 40 possessions and something ridiculous, a bit like what he did today. And at the end of the game, I was talking to him and said, maybe you should just play for yourself a bit more often. And every person said, such a great leadership game and that's the captain you want. And his growth and willing to try things through the year, I think so many good key defenders in the competition. And the thing that makes this the best of them in my view, bias of course, um, but the thing that makes him the best of them is he's a defensive juggernaut, but he's also a offensive threat. Like, offensively, he's going to cause other team a lot of trouble. So that double-edged sword when you're playing against someone like James Sisley is difficult for opposition in the same way that it's really difficult to play against Dacos because you have all these things that you have to do and you have to worry about. And um, James won his battle today. Yeah, the guy that was the MCG for the first time as a player today, Brad Ryan, you believe what he's doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, before the draft, I, I could see... I think there's something about that big, awkward guy that's quite a tough matchup. And I think he kicked three, but he also uh, he also tapped that one down. I think if we re-watched that, he, he was quite deliberate in his little tap down to, to Luke Bruce for his, for his goal as well. And he's got some footy smarts. He's been around, you know, he's 25 years old. He, you watch him in the locker room, in the change rooms, he's quite disappointed with his... I don't know, he doesn't know why he's doing this celebration because his arms are so skinny. But um, I think when, when we see him at training, quite often he does something uncanny, unlikely. And when you convert that into AFL, I mean, he's doing some things that a second gamer does, which he'll improve. But he's also got some things in his kit bag that you can't teach. And, um, you know, he's an exciting player. He's having a great time out there. Just the centre down demolition you had today. If you hadn't had that quarter against the Saints... Last week, was that the sort of wake-up call the midfield needed to produce a dominant performance like this? Oh, I think our midfield has been consistent, the most consistent line for us this year. And the, the problem, they've been the most consistent, but they've still had little patches that have been out of the order. We got really touched up against Carlton. 
Um, they they were fantastic against us without a, a re, you know recognised ruckman. So that was probably the first wake up call. And then last week, the centre bounces. It wasn't all perfect play from the Saints, but we know that the centre bounces is such an important phase. And when you play against a side that so heavily relies on momentum, like Collingwood do. You know, you know, they couldn't get multiple goals in a row quickly because we kept winning the centre bounce and um, that was a really important part of the game. And I think Ned Reeves deserves some credit because the last two times he's played against Darcy Cameron, he's been beaten and his dominance of the aerial play in the centre bounces gives us an enormous advantage. And, um, you know, he's not... He took three marks today, which is a step forward for him, but he's not able to get his hands on the footy enough around the ground yet. But what he does do is give us stoppage um, control for a lot of the game. Uh, Seamus popped his finger, I think. Might have even popped two fingers, but um, no, we've, we moved Dacos into the back half and decided to sub him out because we had too many defenders. So um, I think, I, don't, I didn't see any injuries concerns, but I haven't got an update yet. Thanks, guys.